This is the pivot where we talk about topics that are central to our game. And joining us now is the one, the only Kayla Alexander. She does it all. She's a professional athlete. She's a member of the Canadian senior women's national team. She also is a co-author of the book, The Magic of Basketball and a co-founder of Tall Size, which Kayla, I cannot wait to go shopping on your website because I've been checking it out, but I got a, I got a few things in my bin. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, we built tall size to help fellow tall women like yourself. So exactly. Listen, I'm, I can't even imagine what it's like to be like your height. Obviously, like you're about six, four. Like, yep, six, four. yep. I'm struggling at five eleven. So uh, well, we share the same experiences. I feel your pain. <laughs> exactly. OK, let's dive on in. So NBA 2K. Sabrina Ionescu is making her debut as the face of the cover for the women's side of it. Um, but there has been some backlash in terms of, you know, there's other players that have a bit more of a resume under their belt. And Sabrina's still pretty new to the game. Um, in general, we talk about the entirety of the league right now. Um, and a big name that's come up is Asia Wilson. You know, she's yeah. an MVP. She's a champion. She's run so much things. She's been crucial to the Las Vegas Aces. Um, how do you feel about you know, them going in the direction of Sabrina rather than not saying Asia Wilson in particular, but like another athlete. From my understanding of this, I, I agree. I feel like Asia is like a prominent player in the WNBA, if not like the face right now. She's a two-time MVP, like you said, a champion. She has an incredible resume in just her five years in the WNBA. Whereas Sabrina, she's been in the W for three years now. She still has a, a great resume of her own. But I, from my understanding, I feel like they went with her for the cover because on the other cover, on the men's side, it's uh, Kobe, correct? So I yeah. felt that perhaps they went with Sabrina because of that relationship that the two of them had together. Um, they've been very public. It's been very known that they had a close relationship, that he yeah. watched her when she played at Oregon. He gave her pointers. They trained together. He played, She trained with Gigi as well. Yeah. Um, so I feel like if they were trying to do like a homage kind of thing for like Kobe Bryant, then I could understand maybe why they went in the direction of Sabrina. But if mm -hmm. we're going based on accomplishments and standing, I got to give it to my girl, Asia. When I think about like the, the, the direction they took, I think they just have to be so careful because it's something that Paige Becker has actually brought up two years ago yes. at the ESPYs. And like, mm -hmm. I, it rings true to this day. If, if you even look at, for example, Sue Bird versus Sylvia Fowles, how much mm -hmm. coverage... Sue got versus Sylvia, and they actually have very similar resumes and accomplishments, yes. girl. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you're, you're spitting facts. You're speaking to the choir. Um, <laughs> it's true. It's it's sad because the WNBA is made up of, what, like 80% African-American Black women, yet they don't get nearly as much coverage as their white counterpoints, our counterparts. So yeah. it is something that we're still trying to battle and deal with, even in 2023. Um, so, no, you're preaching to the choir, and I, I agree. But I feel like there are some disparities at times. Yeah, because, you know, there is, like I said, there's tons of talent. And that's not to say that Sabrina's not. Like, she's absolutely talented. She is probably going to be the face of the league at some point in the future. I could totally see that happening for her. That being said, I do want to jump in to um, some national team talk. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me change my shirt. <laughs> Let me <laughs> oh, the extra. Oh, yes. <laughs> we can do shirt change? Yes, okay. Got to wrap. <laughs> Got you are ready right she, yo she's ready she is ready this is a tall size co-founder guys this is this is great um all right so a colleague of mine actually michael grange he tweeted saying that the u19 girls team is one of the best assembly of talent that canada has ever seen how do you feel about this because you know there was a time when you know you were that around that age and you played with some very top talented uh, or some top talents in that age group as well do you feel like we're seeing almost a golden age of the U19 like national team program? Um, and also, what does the future look like for Canada? Cool. So I'm going to start by saying that there is so much talent in Canada, so much talent that came before us, so much yeah. talent that's current, and so much is going to come after us. So um, I, I admire his blanket statement of like the best assembled team. I have a couple words for that because I have some teammates who are not U19, who are very talented, who I would fit on that list of like great players, but I have to give it up to the U19 team as well. They were yeah. incredible and they got Canada our second medal. I feel like Canada, like we have so much talent yeah. that's coming up. Um, and it, it all also goes 
to the woman who came before us, who put in the work, who mm -hmm. sacrificed, um, who paved the way for us to be here today. So I think you make a really great point in terms of like, there's so many standout individual talents, like even like the team that you play on the senior national team, like, you know, you go through one through 12, you guys are all solid, right? You guys have all accomplished so much in your individual careers and continuing to as you are. Um, and then you kind of look at the future and, you know, you see names like Toby Fournier um, yeah. coming up and she's nasty. She's so she's, cool. Yes. <laughs> yes, she's a beast. It's so much fun to just see her growth and just, just watch her play as well, too. And then you got like Aaliyah Edwards and then, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen like she's she just finished her NCAA career, I believe, but Shayna Pellington, like there's so many amazing like women in this program. Exactly. I think it's so exciting and like even when you say like pay homage to like the people who came before like you know I immediately think of even like this hits close to home for me because like I have an aunt that played on the Canadian national team as well and she left the house basically got 15 years old and continued to start to travel the world playing basketball and then she got a scholarship and all that stuff but like mm -hmm. you know it's it's one of those like there's just so much talent you could go all the way back to the 60s to today mm -hmm. at the end of the day i i feel like there's enough light for all of us to shine i don't like being absolutely like, taking away from others players because we're all gifted we all have different talents that we bring to the table and again i always want to give back give uh, homage to the ones that came before us because if they yeah. don't do the work before us we don't get the opportunity absolutely but hey um thank you so much for having this conversation Kayla. and on that note i'll let you go thank you so much uh, thank you <laughs>